Let's check it out. All right. Oh, yeah, in class at, e at WKU. Uh, Emily, I did that too, actually. I was on an... Oh, good. Thanks. Brandy, did you do that? Somebody just recorded for me. What in the heck? Thanks, whoever did that. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I had a, just finished my master's at WKU and we used it in one of our online classes. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this is actually making me do something. All right, without further ado, let me present at you here. All right, here's my screen. Oh gosh, don't give it away. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do it this way. This is more fun, in my opinion. Once I get into it, I'll, I'll get out of my slide deck, but this gives you a little bit of a prettier picture of my presentation. So, what the heck, Pear Deck. Um, guys, I, I was already saying it, but this is one that I'm like ready to put my own money into. This thing has been super fun, um, but also just lots of different tools that are already there at your fingertips that you can implement for like, lots of different age groups and lots of different content as well. So this is by no means, um, you know, limited to one subject or one age group or whatever. This is great for elementary all the way up through high school. Um, my name is Kelsey Birdwhistle. It's nice to see of you. I think a lot of you I have worked with previously or some of you I don't know at all. So that's great. Um, I am an eighth grade ELA teacher over at West Harden Middle. Uh, I'm also a I don't know how Brandy would put it, a former, but also current HCS Innovate Fellow. You're kind of like, uh, I did the program for uh, three years whenever it first started. So now you're kind of like grandfathered into the program, so to speak, in one way or another. Um, that is my email address down there if you would like to get a hold of me. Um, I do have a Twitter handle. I feel like I should do that, but like, guys, Twitter is great. And that's on my list of things to get into, but it's also a whole lot of whole lot of time drained with <laughs> social media stuff. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not to Twitter yet. I know I should be in some regard. <laughs> but there you go. Um, it is good to have you guys. So what in the heck is Pear Deck? Like, what's the big deal? Why can't I just use Google Slides? Well, Pear Deck is a Google Slides add on that enables you to make interactive slides and presentations. So not only can you present your material, but then you can embed questions to check for understanding as you go or like little refreshers or something fun and quirky to, to keep your kids interested. Um, there is a template library and it um, this is a pay the, the template library. Part of it is free. The part where you can easily throw it into classroom um, is a paid feature, I believe. I have a I have a link to their like, you know, breakdown of what's paid and what's free later on. Now that doesn't like you could just as easily throw a slide deck in there and then share out the code with them as I'll show you later. So it's not really a deal breaker, but it is nice to have the integration to throw it into classroom right in the program. So I'll show you that. You've got some different lesson builders there. And also you can, like I was saying earlier, lots of different subjects. Um, it gives you um, templates for, as well as different age levels as well. Um, this is a great, whoa, 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 whoa. slow down, slow down. Uh, this is a great way to incorporate formative assessment embedded into the presentation. Now, what I will say about the formative assessment part of this in terms of paid versus unpaid features, it is free to embed the questions. Um, however, to get the breakdown of like this was Susie's response and this was Jacob's response, that is a paid feature. Um, and so that's one thing for me that to get the formative assessment data, it seems like it would be worth to pay for just so that I could see like, okay, this is the specific kid that's getting it. This is the specific kid that's not getting it. Um, let's see, uh, auto saving features, just like it, again, it's a slides add on. So it's going to save it just like it would, um, for slides. And then there's a free version with opportunities for upgrades. Um, and with the upgrades, you can have the choice of having a student paced, uh, slide deck where they work through it themselves, or it can be teacher driven where you're the one who's actually presenting at that point and taking them through slide by slide. So let me pop out of here for a moment. Um, this is gonna be a good one to come back to, but I'll kind of, um, I'm gonna, sh I'm going to share one with you all to play with first, just so that you can see how it works. If you're someone who already has some experience and you wanna go ahead and like jump in here and start messing with it and start designing your own thing, 
knock yourself out. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, so this is step number one. You would uh, open Pear Deck add-on through the add-ons menu. So the way that you would do that, and I'll go through this a little bit later, but you'll open slides, click add-ons, and then go down to Pear Deck to add it on. And we can talk about how that goes and what you need to do. Um, interactive slides, so it'll pop up this little sidebar here for you. And then you can implement these different templates if you want or design your own. And then you're going to click present lesson to have the interactive lesson. All right, so what in the heck is a Pear Deck? You've never seen it, never played with it, never heard of it, never experienced one for yourself. I really like Hamilton. And I'm really sorry for those of you who don't because there's obviously something wrong with you, but that's beside the point. What I'd like for you to do is go ahead and go to joinpd.com. And again, if you're really sick of Hamilton or like you're like, oh, I don't care, just play along. Make up answers. It really doesn't matter. This is just for fun. But go to joinpd.com. I'm going to copy that and throw that in the chat as well. So if that's easier for you. Oh, it's not giving me, dang it. oh, well, you get the idea. Joinpd.com, not hard. In just a second, I'm going to throw out the code and I'll leave that open for us for a little while. Bear with me because again, this is something that I am playing with. It is not something that I have yet used with students myself, but I am uh, getting used to how to run it myself. Currently, I'm in this slide deck that I've created with Pear Deck. We're going to go to my add-ons, open my Pear Deck add-on. This is the lesson that I want to share with you all. So I'm going to click start lesson. I want for this, so it'll give you a choice here. Do you want it to be student paced or do you want the instructor to do it? I'm going to click instructor for today. Once you're at joinpd.com, it's going to give me a code here. And that code is right here. It's letter M B S F G. I'm going to stay right here with this up on my screen and let you guys throw it in here. Good deal. And I'm actually going to jump over here and put that in the in the chat too for anybody who needs it. You all feel free to, if anybody asks for it in the chat and you see that people have asked for it, um, definitely throw it out there again for folks that might come in late. M B S F G. M B S F G. Thank you for those of Jackie. Go girl. Thank you. No, <laughs> no Jackie. No oops. That's oh you did it wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> You tried though, which is nice. <laughs> I'm gonna give everybody just a couple more minutes to get in there. I think I've got 51 people in the in the deal. Actually, I wonder if it'll let me. I'm gonna try this too. Oh yeah, I'm gonna try to have it up as a student too, so maybe we can even do like a side by side so you can see what it looks like. Um, do, 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 do. M B S F G. Oh, how am I feeling today? I feel pretty good. A little overwhelmed, but good. Oh yes. Hamilton, I love Hamilton. This is gonna be so much fun. Okay, 39 seems like a good number. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. If, just like with like a Kahoot or something else that you do in your classroom, if students are late, they can still join up. So feel free if you're like, ah, I didn't get it yet. And you'll see up here in my upper right-hand corner that I've got the code too. Let's try this. Again, bear with me if it's goofy and uh, it doesn't quite work. I'm hoping that it does. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, how excited were you for Hamilton to hit Disney Plus? And down here it says, students, enter a number. <laughs> I 
when my husband was playing this last night, he actually really does like Hamilton. He put negative 180 something. I said, that was not helpful. Uh, Whitney, students would not have to have the add-on. That is just for designing. And then once you present, it'll present it in such a way that you can give them the information. Okay, so let me show you, we've got almost everybody. Um, so then as the teacher, once everybody clicks, I can then click uh, you can see down here it says show responses oh yeah this person was super excited 20. see and i wish let's see can i tell who this person is <laughs> again i'm playing around but this would be fun and they'd be like okay so that's gonna be uh you know my favorite student <laughs> but you can see down here we've got lots more you know lots of folks who are like oh not interested at all or like people who are like woohoo and these folks who are like uh, you know, just in the middle somewhere. So it it even breaks down, obviously, like a, an average there for you. Um, <laughs> kind of giving you some guiding lines there. Interesting, too, you can lock the screens of students so that I'm not going to try that right now because I want to make sure that I can, can uh, get out of it if I needed to. But theoretically, you could freeze everybody in place on your Chromebook so they're not over there like, okay, what are the, what are the Kardashians doing today, right, or whatever. Um, and, you know, Keep everybody on track. You also have um, the option if you're like, whoa, my kids did not get this. You could throw in a new prompt, boom, right there. So you're like, okay, so wait, let's really talk about this. So like, did you, are you not excited because you hate musicals or uh, are you not excited because you're a terrible person? No, I'm just, no. Um, you get the idea, right? You would be able to add like some kind of clarifying question there to like try to get to the bottom of their knowledge or whatever. So. Woohoo. All right, next. So I'm going to go down here and go to my next screen. Drag the icon onto your favorite Hamilton character. Yay. Again, if you've never seen it, you can pick based on appearances. You can choose not to respond. You can do something silly. It's fine. Oh, nice. I already have four. See, this is the thing. Everybody's like, woohoo, let's do it. Because now I already have 42 responses, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so you can see some people are moving theirs as they go, whatever. Um, very cool to see like, yes, King George totally stole the show. In my opinion, I liked his songs on the recording, but I was not prepared for uh, the goofiness of his actual performance. It was so wonderful. Um, for the record, I've only seen it on Disney Plus. I have not seen it performed live. Um, so, you know, like that would have been a good clarifying question, right? Those of you who are not excited, maybe you're like a theater snob and you're like, uh, movie? No thanks. But yeah, you could do this obviously with lots of different things. Um, again, I won't go into all that right now. Let's keep playing. All right. Slide four. Um, I will say this. Uh, what is the best song from the show? If you don't know any of them, I put like a thousand on there because they're all so good. Uh, but, you know, do your thing. Um, I will say too, I am doing this to kind of showcase the different types of questions that you can ask, but I could also embed different things into my slides as I go. So like, let's say that I'm like, all right, well, let's, you know, which one is the most complicated song from the movie or, you know, from the musical, blah, 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 whatever. I could actually, you know, have YouTube clips embedded into another slide where they could go and watch and then respond to a question. Or I might have like, let's look at this article together and then come back and answer this question. So it's not just for throwing questions out to your kids. It's about incorporating those questions into the slides themselves. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show. We got 33. All right. Yep. Oh, please don't make me choose. Yes. <laughs> um, 
man, I'm such a total nerd. If you haven't watched it yet, um, it's on YouTube. And it came out when the musical came out originally, like the original Broadway cast, like back in, what it was it, 2016 or something like that. Um, and it's a PBS documentary all about like the making of Hamilton. And it's really fascinating to see even like stylistically the different, um, the way that different songs are written for different characters very purposefully. Um, and Lin-Manuel Miranda has been, this may be a bridge too far for many of you, but he's been compared to Shakespeare in the sense of like, the complexity of the way the lyrics and the poetry are written to represent different characters, just like Shakespeare did in his work. That's just a side tip, a uh, side note for you guys who, especially you upper level English teachers, if you want to get into, if your students like Hamilton, you can talk about comparing Hamilton to a Shakespearean something or other. Super fun. All right. So obviously you can see choices there as we go. All right. Next up. This one is drawing. How fun is that? Draw the type of natural disaster that led Hamilton to immigrate to America. Check this out. You can pick your color. What? If you don't know what it was, I'll give you a hint. Hamilton lived on an island in the Caribbean. And again, I'm having to do this with my mouse. If, if you have a touch screen one, I think you, oh, I'm gonna actually try that real quick. What, let me draw with my finger. Oh, yes, cool. Okay, so if you have a touch screen Chromebook, you can actually obviously touch right on the screen and it'll let you draw. That's so awesome. All right, so let's see some responses here. Now, <laughs> this is fun because, will it let me do that? I want to see lots of responses. Oh, okay, okay. I just have to scroll down. So like, this is this is this student's work. Here's another one. I like that we're picking. Yes, uh-huh, bad times. It was a hurricane, by the way. A deleted response. <laughs> oh, very nice. Good. <laughs> ah, oh no, here it comes. So like, then you can go through and like talk about each other's. I really like the deleted responses. Oh, nice. And yeah, writing it out. That's cheating, by the way. You're supposed to draw. No, that's not really cheating. I, that's good. But you get the idea. Here's mine. Looks like an egg. <laughs> I was just playing with it. So yeah, fun, right? And that's a good way to check for comprehension. Like even for me as a reading teacher, I can be like, you know, what draw the, draw the setting for this particular scene or whatever. Like what, what we read yesterday, what was the setting? And then draw it. Or, you know, science, you could think about like, what uh, what direction do you think the data will take on the map? Or I don't know. Or math. This is great because I know math is often has a hard time of you know uh, being able to type different mathematical equations and things like that. Like a student can drag a mouse or a student can touch their screen and you know do something of that nature. Oh, very astute. This is good. Well done, everyone. <laughs> but notice that we all kind of, or like most of us chose a blue color, right? To represent the water. So we can already tell like, okay, comprehension wise, like we're kind of there together, right? Um, you can see how you can kind of check things. Now, here we go. Who is the hero of Hamilton? This is a text question. You're being asked to write your response. And in a good English classroom lesson, there's no right answer, really, as long as you can defend it. And you can feel free to write a name or you can write a little defense of your thing, too. If I was doing this in my classroom and I wanted my students to explain themselves a little bit, I might write, explain out to the side or give your defense. I'll give you a minute. 
If you don't know, you can Google it. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and, and show this one. But if you want to write your own, you can, and it'll still pop up here. So, I'll, yeah, Hamilton himself, Eliza Hamilton. I don't know. Mother Hamilton. <laughs> you would like it to be a strong, independent woman. She kind of is, except for the timing is hard because she's, her husband cheats on her and she still like sticks with them. And maybe that's admirable, but maybe that's also like a sign of the times. I don't know. Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. I mean, totally Aaron Burr. Yeah. Aaron, you know, sorry, again, nerding out here, but this is fun from a literary standpoint because you could totally then take this, right? Do your little new prompt here on the side. Like, all right. So most people are saying it's Hamilton, but then I have this other group over here that are saying Eliza who deserves to win. Boom. Let's, you know, duke it out or whatever right there about whatever you've presumably all seen or all read together, right? Um, so again, lots more interaction than there would be otherwise. Uh, if you haven't watched it and you, ha oh man, just so many good things. Hamilton has a lot of bad qualities. It's a lot of good qualities, but a lot of bad ones. Oh, so, well, all right, let's do our last one here. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. All right, let's go here to learn more about this topic. This is the one that I'm not sure about yet. I didn't really practice this one. Did it? Is it giving you a link down here at the bottom? It's saying mine refused to connect. Boo. Mine's doing it. I'm not sure why. I think, uh, throw it in the chat there. Anybody else having trouble opening that link? Oh my gosh, Heather Brown, that's so cool. <laughs> oh man, Moana is legit, Mandy, no doubt. Yeah, go to the link at the bottom and see if you can click on it. Again, this doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you how you could use this. And again, this is why it's good to practice. But in theory, all right, so stay with me, in theory, uh, this should have taken you to the IMDb website for Hamilton uh, to where you can watch the trailer. You can look at different characters. You can see who's on the cast, blah, blah, blah. Total rabbit hole of all things wonderful and Hamilton and Lynn Mel Lynn Manuel Miranda. Okay. Guess you can tell how I feel about Hamilton. Not really a secret at this point. Okay. So that is Pear Deck, which again, super fun. The reason I did things the way that I did was to just show you the different types of questions that you can embed. So now you're like, okay, that was fun, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But how in the heck do I do this? So let me show you. You're going to open a Google slide deck. Here I am in my Google slide deck. You can create a new one. You can pick something that you've already taught. What? And do this yourself too. You can actually use something you already have and throw Pear Deck stuff into it. It doesn't have to be a brand new creation. What? So great. So once you're in slides, then you need to go over here to add-ons. Bum, ba -da -da. I'm going to click on add-ons and then it's going to say, get add-ons. You probably don't have it where it says Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on, blah, blah, blah. You don't have that yet. Pretend like that's not there. You're going to go to get add-ons and then it's going to take you to a screen like this. And you're going to say, what if this Pear Deck wasn't down there? You might not know about that. So you're going to go up here and be like, mm, Pear Deck, please. But hey, it's already here. Obviously, you can tell mine is already installed. So once you search for it, I'll go ahead and do that. Pear Deck, please. 
sweet, click, okay? Then it's gonna ask you to do kind of the normal stuff like create your account with Google and allow it to do this and do that and blah, blah, blah. Whatever, that's fine. And then it's going to be part of slides for you, okay? So if I wanted to put a incorporate Pear Deck onto this presentation, I would go here to add-ons, boom, and then I would click Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on, and then I'm like, all right, open Pear Deck. And what it's gonna do is it's going to open Pear Deck for you. Bum, bum. So you can see over here to the side that it now has your Pear Deck kind of toolbar, so to speak, all right? Now, I will tell you, actually actually accidentally did this because I didn't mean to do it until the school year actually started, womp womp. Um, it'll keep prompting you to be like, hey, you wanna try the premium version for free? Um, which is like, sure, but you only have it for 90 days. So I, it's fine, I've already saved it, whatever. Again, I feel like I might be willing to pay for this myself uh, because of what I think it would give to my students. But if I were you, I would save the premium fancy pants stuff for closer to the school year so that you have like more days for free going into the year. Just a suggestion. Um, but once you get over here, you can see you don't wanna click start lesson until you've done all of your like fancifying, okay? So save this little green button until the end. But what you could do is these are all the different types of questions that I implemented, okay? So let's say that on this particular slide, I wanted to know, you know, what questions that they had. So I'm asking a text question. I would already have that text question posted on the slide itself. And then it would add a space for them to answer at the bottom. So it's not that by adding this question, I type the question itself. The question would have to already be typed into the slide. And then down here, when the student saw it, that, that is what provides them the space to actually be able to respond to whatever question I've already put up on the slide, okay? Again, you've got your multiple choice, you've got your rating, you've got website, you've got draw, you've got draggable, okay? Um, this is a, an advanced feature where you can add audio to the slides. So you could talk them through something, blah, 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 blah. Here are my instructions. You get it, okay? Um, but, 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 but. If you need a little more, how Pear Deck works, okay? And then, this is kind of the really cool part, is our template library, okay? So this is where I was talking about the fact that it can give you lesson builders or like stuff for your content. So like, I wanna ask a question for the beginning of my lesson, okay? So right here, it gives you some already made templates that then you can tweak to be able to, um, you know, get your class rolling. So this one is kind of like a procedural slide. What did you learn from the homework? A drawing slide, draw two things that you already know about today's topic. Um, think of a question your classmates might have, you know, again. And you can then modify these too. So it's not, pretty sure, let me double check on that. Let's throw this one in there, just to see. I think you should be able to modify it a little bit. Yeah. So like, hey, instead of being wonder about today's topic, what do you wonder about, um, you know, the water cycle or <laughs> whatever you're going to teach about, right? Um, this one is good for formative assessments. Okay. So how was the homework assignment? Or like, how did you feel about... Um, learning about fractions or whatever. And then the students can, this is a draggable where they can take the icon and be like, oh, this is terrible, or this is okay. Or, you know, you can see they have a range in here. So maybe they're somewhere in the middle, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's just the beginning. So again, according to your content, I'll let you play, but you know, during lesson, end of lesson, learning development. So different kinds of questions for critical thinking or social emotional learning. Um, example questions for your subject areas. You've got littles, right? K through two. Oh my goodness. Um, math, folks, science, social studies, languages, ELA, right? Woo! Go in there and knock yourself out. Um, lots of great opportunities. 
Let me see if there's anything else. And then obviously, um, uh, like then I can just throw this slide deck into my classroom. And even though it's, it's kind of like both, it doesn't just become a pair deck because you added pair deck things to it, or it doesn't stop becoming a slide deck because you added pair deck things to it. So it's like, they're both together. So if I threw this into my classroom, they could look at it just as a normal slide deck, but to do the interactive things, that's where you start to get into the, the pair deck, like start the lesson thing. So if I'm like, all right, this one's good to go. I'm gonna click my start lesson. And then, you know, obviously as the teacher, I gotta decide, okay, do I want these little kids to be running off on their own or do I wanna do this? Booyah. You get the idea. Then this is going to like pull up the code and blah, 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 where we can do all that together. Okay. Ooh. Oh, Rachel, sending me text messages. All right. Okay. Let me go back here. I've talked for a long time. You all can play. Here are my, here are kind of like, just a couple more thoughts here. Uh, possible pitfalls versus perks. Pitfalls whoo, can be time consuming. I would highly recommend you go in and dig up a slide deck that you've already created for a lesson and then implement your pair deck stuff. Doing that Hamilton one last night, like I'm nerding out on all of it, but I'm not asking really hard questions and it still took me like an hour. You know what I mean? So um, pick and choose. It's not something that I would necessarily use every single day unless I had, you know, I don't know all the time in the world, which I don't, but it's great. Uh, a great way to build it in. Um, I would test it out, you know, sign in as a student and use the code. You can actually do that. I put two devices cause I made my husband do it with me last night, but you can actually just open up in a new page and put in, you know, join pd.com and put in the code yourself and then try it out as a student so that you can see what it looks like. Um, not all the features are free, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but the perks are like, whoa, student interaction real-time formative assessment and individualized formative assessment if you pay him a little moolah. Brandy knew. I don't know if you're hanging out in here or not, but let's talk about some purchase power for this thing. <laughs> There's lots of things to buy though. So, And we all know how much funding we're getting this year. Yay! Side note. Okay. This is just bringing you to the site uh, about Pear Deck and what comes with what pricing guide. So you've got free, this is like, so if I'm like, if the district isn't gonna buy this for me, then I'm gonna go ahead and blah, 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 right? So, um, you know, I can go ahead and jump in here, buy it for myself and off running. I don't have to have whatever, which this is expensive, don't get me wrong, but I'm seriously considering buying this for myself or possibly if, if classroom stipends still exist this year, I might use it for my classroom stipend. We'll see. Um, but you get the idea. Whoa, immersive reader capabilities. What? Okay. And adding audio to slides, man, for your kids with IEPs that you need to read for. Come on. Let's go. Right. So you can play with that and see what you think. Bink, 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 bink. All right, let's go down here. Time to play. If you haven't already done so, go in there, install that add-on, create your account, play around. You can design something stupid, silly, goofy, or you can be like, you know what? This will work really well for this lesson that I already have all planned out, blah, blah, blah. Do it, okay? Overachievers, if you're like, got it, done, see ya, you guys can practice sharing the link and then actually incorporating it into your classroom in, in whatever way that feels appropriate to you. Um, I am going to stop presenting my screen and I'm gonna jump over here and I will help um, field some questions for you guys. Let me see.
Mandy, good question on student paste. I might actually uh, play that out with you <laughs> or anybody else who wants to play on what that would look like. And we can figure that out. I haven't tried that yet. So be good to practice together. Um, colors and images are not editable. I know that they are on the premium version since I accidentally already signed up for it. So let me see if I can show you that real quick. And then Mandy will get to your student driven one. Let me share my screen again. Present my whole screen. Look out world. Anybody who was at my last session can tell that my Coke has kicked in at this point. Super fun. Me and caffeine. It's nice. Okay. Let me see. Um, okay, Whitney, colors and images, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking like the colors and images for the questions or like the draggable items. I'm going to show you how to change those. I'm not sure exactly what you, what you're referring to. So if I'm, if I'm not representing that the right way, let me know. But let's say if I'm here, um, and I wanted to do a draggable on this slide. It will let me choose the shape that I want. And notice too, that I can do shapes. I can do math symbols. So you could be like, what? Like, man, for littles, like where you're manipulating like an equation in a math class, like this blank, this equals this. So if you had like, five and then a blank and a two equals seven, you know, what symbol, what math symbol are you gonna have to put in the middle there to know what, how to make that equation right. Um, so yeah, 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 on and on through here. And then you can also change the color of those symbols. You can also change the size of that symbol. So if I have this star and I'm like, no way, man, I want them huge, okay. And then you can, you know, do it however you want. Um, or you're like, really tiny like this. Okay, your idea. Um, that's draggable. Let me see if that helped address Whitney. And that would apply to other colors or other types of questions too. Let me show you one thing on here as well. Templates library. Do, 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 do. Example questions. What? Oh my word, y'all. Okay. I mean, just so good. Just, I don't know. You just got to look at all this stuff because, dang. All right. Critical thinking. Yeah. Okay. There's one on here that I'm trying to get to. Yeah, this is kind of, you know, like, again, formative assessment, but like, how are you feeling? Like, I'm, this is really great. Or man, I feel awful about this. I don't know. Anyway, um, keep throwing your questions in there. and I'll try to field those. Let's do Mandy's question. So Mandy, Mandy, you go to joinpd.com. Let's choose student paste. And let's see what it does. Welcome to the teacher dashboard. A few just for you. Okay. So I can see student responses. Keep this one off of the projector to keep the responses anonymous. Use your phone or tablet. Okay. Go to, okay. So we've gone ahead and opened the teacher dashboard for you. To assign this as homework, you can copy the link below and send it to your students or boom, share it to classroom. Um, join code Mandy would be O I O H V, I think. 
It's either O I O or hang on. No, I want it to be big. Mm. Lame. I think that's an I and not an L, but it might be an L. It's either O I O H B or O L O H B. You let me know, Mandy, and anybody else who wants to play with the teacher version or the student student paste version. All right, Mandy's in. I'm gonna try to do this too, actually, Mandy. Join PD.com. O I O H V. And then I think yeah, well. so if it's student paste, then I can go through here myself. Okay. Slide two, slide three, slide four. Okay, and then it's gonna make me answer. I don't know. Cool that you can add another response too. So if they send one and they're like, no, actually. Mm, draggable, it's okay. Okay, so if I'm all done, and then I'm on my slide deck, here are my three students. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonder. Okay, so it's showing me who my students are. Can I? Oh, can block you from the session. Boom. <laughs> I wanna see your work. Maybe you guys are not done yet, slackers. Okay, cool. So then what I can do, am I, yeah, I'm still presenting. Okay, cool. So this is cool. So then this is my teacher dashboard and obviously I'm not going to uh, project this as it said, but then I can be like, yeah, Mandy, you're right. Or you get a star, whatever that means. Cool. Um, let's see. Can hide their response. If you got little Johnny who's like, F this, blah, 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 blah. You're like, okay, that one's not going public at all. Um, or I can leave feedback and be like, hey, that's nice, but have you thought about blah, 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 blah. Or that's not right. Try again. Or who knows, whatever, right? Cool. <laughs> Oh, Jordan, thanks. <laughs> so the difference between this and interactive slides is that you would see all student responses in the same spot. Yeah, um, instead of going to everyone's slides. Yeah, exactly, Whitney. And I would think about this in more like I mean, granted, I am learning about interactive slides and I haven't done this. I haven't used either one in a, in a real time situation yet. Um, <laughs> Jordan. Um, but the idea would be, yes, that you could see everybody at once, give them feedback on the spot right there. In my mind, at least, it would take me a lot of time being a middle school teacher and having hundreds plus students to go through and give the feedback like, you know, after the fact. So I feel like this enables me to have more like on the spot on time. But either way you did it, I mean, you could have on the spot interactive kinds of feedback, them working with interactive slides as well. But, you know, it just may be that this is easier for folks. So yeah, <laughs> Whitney, that would be my impression that it would take forever. So yeah. 
All right, people. Oh, no. I'm getting dangerously low on my battery juice. Oh, boy. I'm going to run off here and go grab my, you know, plugger. Uh, but then I will be back. You all. Don't forget to sign in. When I come back, I will um, post the link for your form again, too. Does anybody else live in a really old house like me? Uh, I don't know why I chose to work in the dining room, which is literally the furthest away from any air conditioning unit that we have in our possession. But it's really hot. I feel like this is the most functional space. So, you know, all y'all country folks, you feel me. By the way, Brandy and whoever else is Leif or whoever else is looking at these. <laughs> I'm sorry if I have entered multiple forms per session. <laughs> Go ahead and apologize for that. <laughs> I can't keep track anymore if I've filled one out or not. So I'm going to do it again just to make sure. Y'all feel free to shout questions at me or throw things in the chat. Uh-oh, Phyllis, let me see. Thank you for looking at that. What's Brandy's? Hmm. I would go to Brandy's link and not the one that I threw on there. 
Let me throw on Brandy's again. I'm assuming that all the responses will have a time signature anyway, so you should be good to go, but I don't know how how exactly they're going about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I really don't think the time sign the time on the form will matter as much. I think that they'll probably break down like this. Yeah, total of six or yeah, how are they gonna check it for us? Um, Margie, you're asking a question. Nearpod versus Pear Deck. Alyssa Stewart on here taught about Nearpod this morning. That's one that I know she likes a lot. I haven't personally used Nearpod. I've played around with it a little bit, but um, I cannot speak for Nearpod myself. So anybody else, feel free to jump in the chat and throw things out there. Yeah, Margie, I probably will have like 20. <laughs> Have fun with that. 